What happens when you take expired liquid yeast, seven month old liquid yeast, and try to brew a beer with it? Only one way to find out. I've got four problems with the beer I'm going to brew in this video, and it's not even brew day yet. Problem number one, I have been asked to brew a beer for an event, and the event is in 16 days, and I haven't started yet. Not great. Problem number two, I've got a bunch of ingredients around my basement to brew a beer at a moment's notice, except for fresh yeast. All I've got is this guy here, and the problem with this is it's quite old, like seven months old. And Imperial Yeast tell you that to use this within four months of manufacture date. So I'm gonna need to make a starter, otherwise I'm probably not gonna have enough active yeast to brew my beer. And that's problem number three. So I'm pretty lazy when it comes to making yeast starters. I've been using these proper starters for a while, saves boiling any DME. But I had a feeling that this has been sat around my basement for quite a long time as well. So I had a look on the Amiga yeast website to see how long this stuff is good for. And it says, what is the shelf life of proper starter? It says the shelf life is two years from the packaging date. Well, I tried to find the packaging date. All I could find on the bottom of the can was a date for July of last year, but it has EXP in front of it, which I assume means expired rather than the packaging date. I'm pretty sure I bought this before July of last year. So I checked that out. And yeah, I actually bought this two years ago. So it probably is expired, like a year on almost from being good. I mean, that said, it's probably okay. It's been stored in a cool place. It's uh, sealed. I'm gonna crack this open. Well, it's a little bit fizzy. Is that right? Why is my proper starter can hissing and foaming when I open it? Proper starter is carbonated just enough to maintain integrity. So a hiss and a bit of foaming is normal. Okay, uh, should I be concerned about contamination? It's pasteurized at 150 PUs, tested for contamination before release. It doesn't smell contaminated either. If it were just a beer for me, I would absolutely use this without a second thought. I'm sure it's gonna be fine, but I am making this beer for an event for other people. I don't want any risk whatsoever of getting people sick. And of course, the idea of this is you just add it into cold water and make your starter that way. It's not gonna get boiled. So I think I'm gonna pass on that, which is kind of unfortunate because problem number four, I dug out my old stir plate. I haven't used this guy for years, to be honest. And it's missing something. There's no stir bar. So, realizing that last night, thank goodness for Amazon overnight shipping. Turns out you can't buy one stir bar. Got to buy four. I thought I'd be super careless with these now. Let's see if this works. Seems to. Now my little stir bar issues did have me wondering if I really did need to use a yeast starter. I mean, maybe this old yeast is gonna be fine. I actually think it probably would, to be honest, because this starts with 200 billion yeast cells. And uh, in my experience, I've never had any problem with imperial yeast. But again, I'm brewing this for other people. I don't wanna mess it up. So I think I do wanna make a starter. And I actually took a quick look on Brewfather to see that this yeast here from last year has a viability of 5%. So my 200 billion yeast cells, now about 10 billion. But if I make a starter, and it recommends a starter of 0.8 liters of water with 79 grams of DME, that will get me to 116 billion yeast cells, which should be enough for the beer I'm gonna make. So I'm gonna make a starter the old fashioned way with, uh, here it is, yeah, light DME and water. And I gotta boil it, what a pain in the butt. Okay, Elamata flask. I'm gonna use 100 grams of DME and then just one liter of water, so kind of a 10 to one ratio. Ugh, I hate dealing with this stuff. Always gets stuck to your fingers. Just using some bottled water, this is really easy. There's 500 milliliters of water in here. There's just two of these. Found some old yeast nutrient as well. Uh, this was manufactured in 2018. Too old? I mean, it's just like dead yeast cells, right? It's probably fine. No, I'm, I'm gonna skip that. 
But fortunately, the ingredients do list yeast extract and nutrients on the packet here. So I think whatever's in here should be enough and uh, they kind of thread this guy out. I don't have any firm cap, so I do need to be a little bit concerned about boil overs. Very concerned, very, very concerned. Saved it. Kids, if you do this at home, get some firm cap S. Now let's get this guy chilled down. This episode is sponsored by Clawhammer Supply. And speaking of Clawhammer Supply, I have Kyle with me. Hey. I want to talk about the this Whirlpool arm because this has totally changed how I brew beer. Even if I'm not Whirlpooling, I use this every time now because it mm. means I can throw hops directly into my kettle and not worry about those filter screens. Right. So was that something you thought about when you ended up making this? Well, we didn't think about it. Somebody thought about it for us. It was actually, I think Steve from the apartment brewer said, hey, I've been doing this thing and um, I'm not using the hop screen anymore. And we said, wow, that's a pretty cool idea. We tried it ourselves and then ended up making this. Yeah, I actually brewed a beer side by side, one with the hop sleeve and one, one without, and mm -hmm. tried to see if I could tell a difference. Yeah. And I sent it to Steve. Oh, really? And he could tell a difference. Oh, he could. I was right. <laughs> so the way I use this is I'll put this in um, and then I just chill for it and at, at the end of the boil. So for about 15 minutes, however long it takes to get down to the temperature that I want. By that point, it sort of creates this cone of all the material, the yep. hot matter in just in the center. So then you can just drain everything off and it all stays in the kettle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the proteins, the, the hop debris, the tube, it all just you know, forms a little tight little cone in the middle. And then what you end up with is a cleaner, clearer liquid going into your fermenter, which I would say makes better beer. Works well. Thanks, Steve. Next day now. For anybody who wants to leave a comment on the YouTube video about some crazy strands of hair, don't bother, I'm already aware. Okay, let's have a look at the starter. This has been spinning for about 24 hours now. It really did bubble up a little bit earlier. Now it's kind of milky. I think this is ready to go. So this is the, the grist. I decided to go with an American pale ale. So my recipe for this, basically I just picked a about five and a half percent ABV pale ale. And the recipe here, what I've got in this is just foundation malt. So this is just straight up pale malt ready. That's six pounds of that. And then to that I added eight ounces of caramel 20 and eight ounces of Munich malt. Only doing a three gallon batch. That way I don't need to worry too much about the yeast. I should have plenty of yeast for that. Then into this batch, I'm gonna do a 30 minute boil. I'm gonna be using Cascade as my bittering hop at 30 minutes, 20 grams of that are going in. Then at 15 minutes, I'm adding in 15 grams of citra. And then I'm gonna use Cascade and citra again in my hop stand, which I'll do right at the end of this 30 minute boil. Then we'll throw in the yeast. All right, so here is the yeast. It has been just a little over 24 hours now. Let's uh, give it something to eat. So I fermented the beer at 66 Fahrenheit, 19 Celsius, and left it for about 12 days, then cold crashed and carbonated. The beer, when I measured it, ended up coming down to 10, 10 final gravity. So it totally worked. The yeast consumed all of those sugars, no problem. Now, how did the beer taste? Well, this was a pretty standard recipe pale ale. And the result was very much that. It was a real easy drinking sipper. And when I took it along to my event, well, it was pretty well received. Well, I think that went quite well because we kicked the keg. So should you be using liquid yeast that's several months out of date? I don't know, but in this case, it totally fermented and the beer, it came out great.